This is the Emergency Medical Minute. I wanted to just talk about acute limb ischemia. I overheard people talking about a potential case a little bit earlier. Uh, and this is an area that we almost always screw up, to be honest, in the, in, in the ER. It's kind of confusing and there's a lot of different ways to approach these. Uh, so I wanted to kind of discuss that. So the patients we're talking about are people who we think are at risk of losing a limb acutely. We see lots of people who have chronic peripheral vascular disease and, and may be ultimately a sort of long-term risk for complications of limb ischemia. But today I'm talking about sort of the acutely ischemic limb. And so what are the, how do those patients present? What are the symptoms of acute limb ischemia? So it's called the five P's, right? One last one. Yeah, so pulseless, pain, pallor, paresthesia, and poikilothermia. I know, which no one's ever going to get, which just means it's a cold leg, right? So we're talking about the acutely cold leg. So when you have a complaint of limb pain, you always want to know the timing. And if somebody says, yeah, it was sudden, that is always highly concerning for acute limb ischemia. And the next thing you do is literally just put your hand on the leg. Is it warm or is it cold? And then next, feel for pulses. And if you can't feel pulses, test for sensation. Do they have paresthesias? Can they feel you touching them? And then you wanna do a motor exam too. Can they move the leg? Because as a limb slowly dies from acute limb ischemia, the first thing is it'll be painful, then it'll get cold, then it'll lose sensation, and then it'll lose movement. So you can tell sort of how viable that leg is based on those elements of the exam. So I can't feel pulses, they can't feel me touching it, and they say move your toes, and they can't move their toes, that person's probably gonna have their leg amputated. So this is, there's something called the Rutherford criteria that we don't need to go into detail with about right now, but those help us kind of categorize kind of threatened, immediately threatened, non-salvageable, et cetera, kind of limb. So given that we think this is a cold leg, then the next thing we do, we really order kind of one test, and that's an ABI, or ankle brachial index. So everyone in the ED should just be comfortable getting an ABI. If someone says to you, hey, get an ABI, really all you do is you get a normal arm blood pressure, and then you get that same blood pressure with a Doppler, on the dorsalis pedis with a cuff over their calf or their ankle. And you basically divide the, the ankle over the brachial pressure. And that is a calculus that we use to determine kind of viability, of, or sorry, the relative perfusion of that leg. And then we get one on the other leg too. So if that person has an abnormal ABI, then you've really confirmed the diagnosis and you really don't need any more advanced testing at that point. And if we think that person is acutely at risk of losing their leg, the next thing we do is start heparin and call vascular surgery. So we shouldn't be getting ultrasounds, we shouldn't be getting CT angiograms until we've talked to vascular because they may or may not want to take the patient to the OR at that point. But if we load them with a bunch of IV contrast dye for a CT angio, that could be a problem if then the vascular wants to take him for a formal angio, you know, instead. So really the next call is to vascular surgery. We do use arterial nevas to kind of work out in patients whose limbs are not acutely threatened or where we think this is like chronic ischemia. The formal arterial neva can be a useful test, but it's not part of the eval of an acutely cold leg. A CT angio with a runoff down the leg can be part of the evaluation of an acute limb, but only with vascular surgery consultation. So that's kind of my pearl about how to work up a cold leg. It's actually pretty simple, and it's kind of a cool diagnosis because it, it's all clinical stuff that we do right here at the bedside. So thank you. Any questions? All right, let's have a good shift.